Hi, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do some basic data manipulation using uh, RStudio and uh, Data Table. So, um, first things first, you know, the, the point of this tutorial is to get you uh, up and running for uh, an analyzing uh, data using machine learning algorithms. The typical example data sets that I um, uh, am discussing in class are from the Elements of Statistical Learning test textbook. If you click on data, you have some links to a bunch of different data sets. You know, most of them are in the CSV tabular data format. So, for example, let's take a look at the um, uh, South African heart disease data set, because that's a small one, pretty easy to understand. So, uh, this data set is, um, you know, just got a few different columns, uh, a few hundred rows. And it's about predicting uh, coronary heart disease, which is this last indicator, indicator variable versus uh, uh, given all the other variables. So let's um, download that data set in R and let's analyze it in using some machine learning. So how about we do um, This frame, show only this frame, so we can see what the URL is. Here, the URL for this data set is saheart.data. So let's copy that. I'm going to create a new R script. And the first thing I'm going to do in my R script is going to be if file exists saheart.data. Also, if the file does not exist, then download file saheart.data. So actually the first argument that you have to give to download file is dot data set URL. And then the second argument is the, is the file name on the local system that you want to use. So it's not super easy to see here, but in fact here, what we're doing is if the file does not exist, we're going to download it. So let's do that first things first, right? So you notice we execute that line of code with control enter and actually it executes the whole if statement and we see a message that it's trying the URL downloaded 24 kilobytes. Great. Now uh, do it again. It's not doing that, uh, trying the URL in because now the file exists. So, Next thing that you're, wanting, you're going to want to do to um, get access to this data set, you're going to want to get a hold of the data table package. And to do that, you should do install packages data table. And that will get the most recent version of the data table package from the central CRAN repository to your local computer once and for all. So usually you would only have to do that step once. And uh, in, in fact, you can put that in if statement if not, uh, uh, well, I don't know, let's just comment it out for now. But uh, you know, you can also, sometimes I do if false install packages. So then I can just, you know, if I want to, I can just execute that one line of code again. But usually if I'm just stepping through the script, it's just not going to do anything. Anyway, so that gives me access to the data table package, um, right? It gives me a copy of the data table package on my local computer so I can use that code. But um, I don't have it uh, loaded into R yet. So, I mean, to uh, use data table to read that into R, to read that file into R, what I'm going to want to do is data table colon colon. So that means uh, give me a function in the data table package. And the function that we want here for reading files is called fread. And here what we want to do is we want to give the name of that file, so saheart.data. And so after that, I'm going to save that in a file called s, uh, in an R object called saheart.dc. And so when I do that, you see that there's a new data object that appears in my RStudio environment. So it says it's 42 
462 observations of 11 variables. And you can get a summary of the structure of that argument from the R command line using stir, which, just, which is a sync description of the structure of any R data set, any R object, actually. So it says it's a data table and data frame, 462 observations of 11 variables. So what do we want to do with this data? Um, so when we want to do machine learning, we want to separate our data set out into a uh, matrix of inputs X and a matrix of outputs Y. So like we mentioned, the last, um, the last column, the CHD column, that is the, um, the, the output that we want to predict. The other variables are the inputs that we want to uh, use for prediction. So here what we can do is, let's, let's say, saheart.dt. And so here we're going to get the names. So when you take the names of the data table, those are all of the column names. And so what we want to say is say is label. So that's going to be a variable that indicates whether or not it's this coronary heart disease column, right? Creating that is label variable. This is a logical vector. And it's going to be a bunch of falses and, so, and one true, right? So here, if we do um, S A heart DT um, uh, is label. Well, actually, you know what? Even even better with, than using a logical vector, we can just get the index using the which which. And so then instead of using uh, so let's let's call that label call I. So here. Label call I is now just the column number of that CHD, the coronary heart disease output variable. And then what you can do is SA heart DT label call I. And um, so you notice that you know, when we're doing a subsetting in R, usually square bracket operator, um, you know, the first uh, argument inside the square brackets refers to the columns. The second argument, uh, sorry, the first argument refers to the rows. The second argument usually refers to the columns. In data table, it's somewhat special because uh, you know the second argument inside of the square brackets is a single symbol, but column name label call i is not found. Perhaps you intended dt dot dot label call i. And so let's try that. And so actually that is what we intended. So that gives us uh, just one of those columns, you know, uh, actually, con and conversely, if we do minus, that gives us all of the other columns. So in R, you use n negative indexing to specify uh, all the columns except for the one uh, that the ones that are specified. So this is actually the, the data that we can convert to our you know, X matrix, let's say as matrix this, right? And so then, you know, here this X map, this is, a, well, actually, so it's a character matrix. So here we get, see, you see that the uh, first thing here, it indicates is a matrix of character strings, 462 rows by 10 columns. So, so when we do machine learning, we don't want character strings. Uh, we want numeric values. That's how we do machine learning. And so the reason why this happens is because when R does type conversion, you get um, you get um, always coercion to when you when you convert something to a matrix, it's going to take always like the most um, the the kind of uh, the, the the most flexible type that can accommodate everything in there. So everything, you know, if there's one character, all the numeric values are going to be co uh, converted to character. So here, if by looking at this stuff, you know, we see that the class, the 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 types of the different rows are integer, numeric, and then there's this one fam hist column which is present or absent. That's a character variable. So you know, we can't directly use this as matrix like this. And anyways, actually, we probably don't want to do that because, because the row names as the first column, you probably don't want to include as a predictor variable because there's no information in there. Of course, a good machine learning algorithm would probably just ignore that because it's obviously irrelevant. But, um, 
but yeah, so so there's a couple of like practical things that we need to worry about when we're actually trying to convert this data set to an X matrix. So how are we going to deal with that? So, um, you know, maybe what we can do is we can create, um, you know, so first of all, we can create a new variable called, I mean, because we want to, we want to actually use that present absent um, information. We just don't want to. Um, we just don't want to use it. So uh, we just don't want to use it as a character, right? So what we can do is we can create a new variable sa heart dt. So again, in this square bracket syntax inside of a data table, we could create a new column. So remember, the second argument has to do with the column. So we could create a new column. Say um, fam hist dot int um, as if else uh, pres you know if else fam hist equals present then it's going to be a one otherwise it's going to be a zero so that's going to create a new variable in our sa heart uh, data set. And what is it going to do? Is it's going to be well, either it's going to be a one if it was present, or it's a zero if it was absent, right? So we see that uh, you know, I mean, another way to see that is, you know, if we just look at sa heart dt fam hist fam hist dot int, we can see well, we're just looking at those two columns, and um, we see that all the present values have been converted to 1s, all the absent values have been converted to zeros. Another way to see that is if we call table inside there. Table will tell us, you know, the contingency table of how the, the absents are mapped to zeros and the presents are mapped to 1s. And so, of course, all the absents are mapped to zeros and all the presents are mapped to 1s. So that's good. So um, now, you know, we've figured out a way to keep that information. Now we just need to um, define what you know what variables are do we want to keep. So what variables do we want to keep for the X matrix? So maybe it's easier to define what do, do variables to ignore. So how about um, ignore it gets well we want to ignore the label column. We want to ignore um, well, maybe we want to do it by name, right? So how about that? Ignore chd, ignore fam hist, we don't want that. And how about ignore row names? So here now we have a, vec a vector of three items. And so now if we want to do a selection of all of the columns except for these guys, you know, one way to do that would be, um, well, so we can't use negative indexing um, because you, you can't take a negative of a character. You can take a negative of that positive, uh, of that uh, integer label column ID. But, so what, what can we do? Well, we can look at our names, uh, sorry, names of SA heart DT, and then we can, um, you know, say, which one of these uh, are names sa heart dt? Which one of these are in the set of to of, of names to ignore? And then we can negate that, right? So then we get all of the set of names which are not present in that list of variables that we need to ignore. Yeah. So let's call that keep. And let's use that as the second argument here, right? So keep. So again, we get this error. It's a single symbol, but column uh, named keep is not found. So usually, when you're inside of a data table, usually the you know it's looking for um, keep as a column name. So because uh, it's not a column name, it, you get this error. And so instead, you can use this dot dot syntax, which means in the context of a data table, this is very specific to data table, it means look in the enclosing environment for something called keep and then use that to select the columns. So here, by doing that, we get x 
dot mat, and we see that x dot mat now is a numeric matrix, 462 rows and nine columns. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now we've got our matrix of inputs. How about our vector of outputs? I'll call that y vec here. And to do that, I mean, all we have to do is um, uh, so label call name instead, label call name equals chd. And so if we don't want to repeat that, we can actually use that twice in our code, label call name. And so after that, you know, we can use label call name, right? S A heart D T label call name. And that would give us a vector of um, that corresponds to that cor column name. So notice the difference here between the double br square bracket indexing and the single square bracket indexing here. So what is the difference? The difference is when you use the single square brackets, you're going to get back um, something of the same type usually. So here in this case, you do the single square bracket index to get back a data table. So here, if you want to see that, you can say, let's call that keep DT. And so here, keep DT, it's, it's actually a data table, you know, with all of the the variables that we want. Whereas, you know, when we do this double square brackets indexing, it's actually taking um, just one element of that table or one column of that data table. So that's the difference between this double square brackets and single square brackets. Single square, square graphics is going to give back uh, you know, something of the same type as what you're indexing. So here the type is a data table. It's going to give back a data table, but with just fewer columns. Here, it's going to give back something which is one of the elements or one of the columns of there. So it's not a data table anymore. It's just one of those columns of that data table. So here, the y vec is going to be actually a integer vector of zeros and ones, right? So now we have... Um, Right, this X mat, which is our matrix of um, of numeric values that we're going to use for inputs, and here we have our Y vec, which is our integer vector of uh, labels that we're going to use in our supervised learning. So um, that concludes like the first torch, the, the first tutorial. What we've seen is first how to download a data set in into R the CSV data set, which are the format of most machine learning data sets. Second, we've seen how to install packages. Here we installed the data table package because we're using that for uh, file reading and data manipulation. Third, yeah, we've seen to actually, you know, we use this fread function for the data table package to uh, read a CSV file into R as a data table. And then we've seen how to do a few manipulations, how to get the, um, that data table into the format that we need for machine learning. That is a, ma a numeric matrix of inputs and an integer vector of outputs for uh, binary classification. Thanks for listening.